I'm here with Grandmaster Srinath Narayanan, who is in Bangladesh right now. Hello, Srinath. Hi, hi, Sagar. Good to see you. Good to see you as well, Srinath. Uh, today we are going to have a look at the Sicilian classical. Is that correct? Yes. And this yes. is an opening that you've been working very hard on. Uh, you've also made a course and we're going to talk about it in a bit. But first, can you tell us what exactly is this opening? So the classical Sicilian is uh, basically uh, with its childhood opening. That's how I would introduce it. It starts with one E4, C5, the Sicilian defense, which is also kind of my childhood opening. I started with E4, E5 like a lot of people, but uh, I remember I got mated in 19 moves in one of my under eight games, the state under eight in the last round. So then after all, all these gambits after 1e4, e5, my coach suggested that I try 1e4, c5 so that I can protect the f7 pawn and not get mated in 19 moves. So if, if a so, bishop comes here, uh, you can always put a pawn here. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Then knight f3. Yeah. d6. d4. c takes d4. Knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and now with knight c6, we enter the classical uh, Sicilian. a6 is, uh, I think, the more popular move here, that is the knight of Sicilian, mm -hmm. which is also what I initially played uh, almost exclusively for uh, a big part of my career. But uh, at one point, it just became too many options for white, you know, there was just so much theory. Then uh, Parimajan Negi had a book around 2013-14. White was like super well prepared in a lot of these lines mm -hmm. after that. And uh, I needed an alternative. So then I went back to... I was looking for options and Knight C6 was one of the easiest uh, variations to look at. It also seems very natural, right? You are developing your pieces. Uh, a Knight is coming out. Can you explain what exactly is the advantage of getting your knight out and what are the drawbacks of, of this? So one of the biggest advantages is that uh, um, in a lot of lines we get a5, a4 in one tempo as opposed to knight off. Mm. And um, it's also versatile because uh, you can start it with uh, different more orders like start with either 2d6 or 2 9 c6 ah, yeah, and you can get to the order, classical right? thing like if you can also start with this move order instead of playing d6 and do this yes mm. although although in the repertoire i recommend uh, the lines after uh, 2d6 that is a more order and it's a, it's a full repertoire basically it's based on the classical sicilian but it covers everything starting from 1e4 c5 Okay. Uh, from second move onwards. So, for instance, I cover 18 different moves on the second move, apart from uh, two knight of three. So, popular lines like c3, knight c3, and even two king e2. <laughs> okay, I won't go into what you recommended for king e2, but uh, I'll definitely have a look at what you recommended for c3 because it's becoming so much more popular these days. Now, uh, right. so going back to knight c6, now the main move here by, by I think a big margin is bishop g5 and as they call this the Richter Rouser attack. Yes. I, I don't know if it's uh, pronounced as Richter Rouser or the Richard Rouser. I uh, pronounced it as Richard Rouser in all my videos. I hope I'm not wrong. It must be right. You did the research. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, but this, this... I don't know. I don't know the pronunciation because I've been reading it for 20 years, but I've never uh, seen anyone pronounce it. Mm. So back in those days in 2000, we didn't have YouTube. So I didn't know uh, how to pronounce it. I only know how it's spelled. Uh, well, I hope that uh, some people will do the research now and get it because I personally, there are some words in chess, which I have never really realized how to pronounce. Uh, one is Juco Piano or Gaiko Piano. Then there is, uh, th there are many such, such words. So maybe yeah. one more to add to that list. So Bishop G5, we continue with E6. Okay. 
and this is our pawn structure in general in a lot of cases it's like the uh, scriven engine uh, pawn structure mm. uh, another word uh, which we are not sure how to pronounce <laughs> yeah but this this, and here this structure can... is very very uh, uh, like you know you have the center classic and you know my experience of richter rouser apart from seeing some vidit games uh, is amruta playing from the white side often and telling me you know i will go queen d2 here i will long castle and i think there are two ways to put your f pawn one is to put it here the other one is to push it to f4 exactly exactly so this is the broad uh, education that we have uh, received and uh, it still remains true for the most part after so white basically castles long and tries to uh, put pressure on black in the center right away and uh, that is why they play uh, with f4 so there is the immediate uh, pressure on the e5 point and uh, this is maybe one of the vulnerabilities of the classical sicilian you come under pressure in the center right away and uh, in general king safety is an important aspect in uh, any position that we play in the classical you have to know your opening to keep your king safe sometimes we castle short sometimes we castle long sometimes we keep our king in the center so uh, here i would say you know uh, the opening is maybe not as solid as something like knight or it's not as solid but it gives you more uh, uh i would say more chances winning chances okay okay so queen... especially at lower levels right so after queen d2 we continue with a6 keeping it ambiguous whether we start with bishop e7 or bishop d7 these are the two ways to begin our development on mm -hmm. uh, this side and uh, white continues with long castle yeah and uh, here bishop d7 is the overwhelming main line right but uh, i prefer to start with bishop e7 oh so that's already the first sort of new i i, I mean to say a new direction won't be right but already you made a choice to go deep here yeah Uh, so this is something i uh, started doing all the way back in 2017 around that time that's when i uh, picked up and started playing the classical sicilian myself and the logic behind starting with bishop e7 is that as you mentioned white has two fundamental plans the plans with f4 and the plans with f3 right in the setups with f3 which i think is a very easy system to play and something that i have uh, played a lot with white myself black usually gets a light square bishop onto the long diagonal that is b7 after knight takes d4 queen takes d4 b5 uh, usually a short castle is included so you're saying but yeah yeah essentially the bishop has to come to b7 and with the setups with bishop e7 we get this bishop onto this diagonal in just one tempo mm. whereas in the setups with bishop d7 you play bishop d7 one move and then get the bishop to c6 So here, and if let's say f three, then generally just take take put your bishop here, and you spend two moves while here you could play it in one yeah. move in this case. Got it. And in a sharp position like this, uh, this one tempo, I think it does matter quite a bit. So in that sense, against the f three setups, bishop e seven is a much better move order, I think. Mm. where play becomes very comfortable for black if white goes for f3 setups we equalize and uh, we are on a good i think a very comfortable side of equality so here this line you think that bishop e7 really helps here uh yes. i also see that the results have been very good in my sort of database here uh, i believe to take might be the most natural way yeah and i guess you'll also find uh, quite a few games of mine also uh, starting with bishop e7 yes i i was i was seeing uh, there was narayanan but then i was a little careful whether it's you or sl narayanan so uh, but yeah it seems like it's you yeah no this one's mine <laughs> okay so so when i when i started playing the a6 bishop e7 uh, i had uh, 
uh, at that time this was not a popular setup mm. i think uh, 27 in 2017 uh almost half of my games were uh, mine amongst players about 2500 but uh, now yeah it has picked up a bit now now i can see that uh, in top players there are there are a few like not here but uh, there have been lot of players who have played it with black especially uh recently in recent times there has been but a lot of indians somehow i don't know whether it's your influence there is nandida there is uh, shri hari there is soumya there is vaishali uh, somehow of course you you as well seems like the indian line yes or what uh you might uh, i guess i uh, i'm not i'm not sure about uh, uh, the con- precise influence but uh, there is there is this uh, story where uh, in the batome olympiad in 2018 mm. we were playing against uh, poland in the last round and uh, we had a very outside chance of medal if we had won that game right so we were looking we were trying to brainstorm variations on uh, you know what to play for a win and uh, i remember uh, showing this to ad he was playing on uh, the fourth board against tom shack mm. uh, from poland and uh, there are a couple of trade offs starting with bishop e7 one is the line with bishop into f6 now in these uh, times this is the top line of stockfish but why would and this is what i move like this be a good move like you are voluntarily giving up your bishop so the thing here is that uh, as black we cannot recapture with the bishop we are forced to take with the pawn because if we recapture with the bishop then we lose the d6 pawn got it so you have to take after bishop f6 g f6 okay yes and in these structures uh, this is a very typical structure in the classical sicilian we have the pair of bishops we have dark square bishop but uh, our pawn structure is slightly impaired it's very tough and, to play right these positions uh, in general or what what is your feeling not if you study my course <laughs> can you can you no, i think a... it's not tough to play uh, because uh, for instance against this setup i can give you a very clear uh, set of you know setup uh, you take the knight on d4 you put the bishop on d7 you first first bishop on d7 take the knight on d4 then queen e5 queen c5 and then you castle long mm. then you get the king to b8 rook to c8 and then there is usually a pawn on h5 uh, to prevent white from playing bishop e2 bishop h5 or some queen h6 in some cases and there's also white's plan which is to sorry which is to play f4 f5 right in such positions yeah white's plan is to play f4 f5 and exert pressure on the e6 pawn mm. so these things have not changed uh, these things remain the same in terms of pawn structure only the concrete approach in a few cases there are additional options so bishop and f6 is one additional option and uh, uh king b1 is the other option here without committing either f3 or f4 i'm not sure but i think this is what uh, a uh, ad's opponent played in that game i think it was king b1 or yeah and uh, you know back in those times agar in 2018 19 the computer used to show a little bit of advantage for white Mm. like you know 0.5 0.6 the eva- engine evaluation yeah and um, people would be uh, worried about going into such positions at back in those times where it was uh, such a big uh, evaluation but ad had such an amazing spirit that he just saw this position and he was like uh, i was a bit hesitant showing it to the indian uh, national team at that time i was like i can play it in my own games i don't mind but what about the national team in such an important game but he just he went he played and uh, he even got some uh, chances oh. in that game that's amazing that's amazing so uh, king b1 is something that he then played with white as well i guess with soumya there is some game uh, that that he played 
uh, is this something which uh, it changes anything or it's just uh, additional move because then white has to decide about his f pawn eventually no i think it's just an additional move it doesn't change anything uh, but okay uh, as black you need to concretely um, uh, know how to respond here mm -hmm. so these are the options for white uh, these are the two additional options uh, or, so by starting with bishop e7 apart from uh, f4 and f3 after f4 we uh, just transpose to the main line with bishop d7 which as i mentioned people generally start with bishop d7 and then play bishop e7 right we start with bishop e7 and then play bishop d7 okay and here um how should we go about like are there any any things to or is it very concrete like whatever white response black has to then respond accordingly so here white's overwhelming main move is knight f3 and this is this is aimed at what like to push e5 yeah to push e5 immediate pressure and pressure in such a way that it's not easy for black to respond mm -hmm. like you know you play a normal move defending the e5 square like queen c7 yeah then white might already be able to play e5 in any case because at the end of everything the d7 bishop is uh, vulnerable right oops first so bishop I should take, first. first i should take this yes sorry take and then this right so knight f3 it's already uh e5 is a big big kind of a threat yeah so the only way you can defend is counter attack mm -hmm. you have to play b5 okay and e5 and now if white oh. plays e5 then uh, we can go b4 very very typical uh, sicilian idea that whenever e5 comes you can and and this doesn't work because generally there is a check it comes with a check you know, this is why uh, this idea works with the queen on d2, but in the same setup with the queen on d3, then we cannot do this. Oh, that's why people have started playing here somewhere queen d3. Or it's because. Yeah, this one is of also an uh, interesting setup. Mm -hmm. Okay. But just to... They have, they have many different alternates now. You know, back in those times, as you said, uh, white goes bishop g5 and then either f3 or f4. But now already I, I showed you four different alternatives on the ninth move. And uh, overall there are like, I think, uh, 10 different ways white can play mm. after six bishop g5. Wow. But yeah, b5, uh, here also I have uh, quite a few fond memories. Uh, uh, some good results in over the board classical. And also a blitz win against Prague, which someone had recorded on YouTube. I didn't know Prague would become uh, this popular and such a amazing and difficult to defeat player now. Mm. So I didn't know this would be such a bragging story, but yeah. Yes, this is uh, now like a great memory for you, but here he would take, right? Again? Yeah, Bishop F6 is the main move. Because, Prague because played E5. Takes here, game. then this is hang. Ah, he played E5 directly and you played yeah. B4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then but generally, okay, so does it games, continue so like this? Like queen takes, pawn, pawn takes. takes. Yeah, it it continued uh, till this point, bishop h4. And uh, here our move is rook g8, which is, you know, what the computer recommends these days. Okay. But uh, there are, uh, I, I, I don't think I played rook g8 at that time. There are alternates. <laughs> Black can play a5 here, rook b8, rook c8. These were the other moves. Got it. So I think I think I played one of those direct moves. Nice. You beat them when they are young and then they become candidates and then world champions and everything. And yeah. I always keep saying that we've beaten them. Except in with its case. <laughs> when you beat him, he was already old enough, yes? <laughs> Yeah, it was also 2019 and it's the last played game between us. Wow. Officially. Which which tournament Fidelity. was it? Asian Continental Blitz. Oh, nice. Okay. Maybe some other video we should record on that, how you beat with it. But right now after night yeah. three, 
B5? Uh, I, we should also record a video on how I defeated Vildeth in the classical Sicilian because uh, really? that was, uh, I think, one of my first, that was my first win against Vildeth. Uh, that was with White though. Ah, doesn't, doesn't fit, into, system. fit into today's theme of video, but we could use <laughs> yeah. it as how not to play with Black then. <laughs> but take, take, F6, G takes F6. Now, now the only thing which I feel is different from what you had mentioned is that you pushed your pawn to b5 so whenever you long castle it might get a little bit more risky right uh, not really because uh, it's also not easy for white to exploit it you know to bring the pieces uh, towards our king mm. so we do long castle here uh, white goes king b1, we continue with queen b6. And uh, this is a kind of starting position of uh, sorts. So these are what I uh, focus on the first few chapters in my course. The very first chapter is uh, this. And uh, like you mentioned, yeah, this variation with f5, uh, long castle, g3, king b8, f6, f6, bishop h3. This is one of the starting positions. If you check uh, an opening book about 10 years ago, the line would end here and uh, conclude that this is plus equal. But back in 2016, 2017, when I looked at this position, I realized that this is not really plus equal. This is equal and uh, quite comfortable for black. So this uh, change in evaluation is what prompted me to take up classical in the first place. And after bishop h3, uh, we continue with rook e8. We are going a bit too deep here in the lines, but uh, my uh, just want to conclude here that black gets pretty comfortable play here, both on the queen side as well as in the center. Mm. With p4 ideas, knight e5, these are typical plans right here. Yeah, B4. Uh, you can go to the C4 square either via E5 or A5. I usually prefer it via A5 because I want to keep the uh, center clear for our pawns. Mm. And you are okay so a sample with variation. Something like this yeah. falling apart. Yeah, I get greedy with Queen H6. We continue with Knight A5. Okay. White takes on H7. Mm -hmm. And now, can you guess what is Black's move? Okay, this looks uh, very, very tempting now to, uh, there, there could, oh, firstly, there has to be some rook h8 business uh, somewhere in the air. I, I was exactly, so how do you make that happen? Thinking about some d5 bishop b4 and then rook h8, but it seems like there's too much pressure this way, this way. Yeah, no, uh, d5 is uh, not the way to go, but you have to make rook h8 possible. Mm. Right now, it's not possible because the e7 bishop is attacked by the h7 queen. Yes, if you go here, then queen takes e7. So, you defend the e7 bishop first. Knight, c6 back? No, but come on. Really, does that work? Yes, exactly. Oh, wow. What a cool move. Yes, come back knight c6 and white is losing a piece or the queen. This, oh, what a nice move. Yeah, this can be missed easily because everyone would think, oh, the knight went to a5 to come to c4. But now after knight c6, imagine if I save the bishop here. Rook h8. Queen. Rook h8. Uh, yeah. Uh, you have to uh, work out a few details here. Mm. Um, so, I think you play rook f8. Queen g7 or g6? Rook, uh, rook f8 and uh, rook g8. And then there is an important move which is uh, needed to... Ah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, so, I think you have to get... I don't, I don't exactly remember, but I think you need uh, e5, bishop e6 somewhere. Or, uh, yeah, so you have to start with b4 and then play e5. Uh -huh. So if you start with, uh, so with the queen on uh, g7 or g6, let's say, mm. uh, like you can start with rook h8, queen f7, and uh, 
now maybe not rook g8 here uh, i think instead of that you have to play b4 e5 and then play bishop e6 and rook g8 got it okay so that can be figured out by our viewers they can check what is the best move here after, but knight c6 is the the winning move sort of here uh for black yeah. okay so going back again this kind of gives a broad overview of what bishop g5 lines are because i think that was the main line and we kind of spoke extensively about it do you think that there are any other moves here which are now becoming very very important for for white so on the sixth move i think bishop g5 is definitely the most important and that's why we spend uh, a lot of time but within bishop g5 uh, um it's not just two important lines anymore but there are more number of lines um uh, we'll not go too deep into it but uh, yeah on the seventh move there's queen d3 there's bishop b5 then mm. uh, apart from this after seven queen d2 a6 these days people just take knight into c6 here this is also you know one of the lines and uh, like this there are uh, a few different options for white yeah, yeah i remember uh, there was some okay, bishop f4 move back right something like that not here i uh, know that is a different variation that comes after uh, if i had if black had played h6 instead of mm. uh, a6 the point is white has to play bishop f4 before i got my bishop to e7 that way black cannot respond with e5 because the queen on d8 is undefended so you you're saying here take no yeah something like uh, no no a6 first sorry a6, a6 long castle and here h6 and now takes and bishop f4 and the point is what that my queen is undefended black has forced to play d5 aha uh -huh. you don't have this option of e5 playing it like a knight of because just this is hanging and this is yeah. if the bishop was here then it would be possible got it yeah and this is quite a sharp line as well because the king is still in the center um but anyway going back here as you mentioned on move number 7 there can be many many possibilities like bishop b5 queen d3 uh yeah starting from move number 7 got it okay and uh, on move number 6 i think bishop c4 is the most important alternative did fisher like this, this move is known as the... sorry did fisher like this move a lot bobby fisher yeah fisher uh, loved this setup and uh, this is known as the sozen setup because a grandmaster soviet grandmaster called sozen he started playing in the 1930s mm. but fisher really popularized it in the 50s and he played bishop c4 not just against classical but against everything right in sicilian but after bishop c4 e6 uh, fisher used to play bishop b3 setups yeah uh the bishop used to automatically go to b3 and the bishop used to be safe there but nowadays people start with bishop e3 mm. bishop e3 queen e2 long castle i i was so, uh, once studying this when i was very young and they told me this is known as the velimirovich attack yeah the setup with bishop e3 queen e2 long castle this is velimirovich attack mm. it's also Within very dangerous the, right later on you go g4 yeah there is also very dangerous and then there is some pawn sack lines there and stuff like that yeah there are uh, ideas with g4 g5 and then there are ideas with f4 f5 f4 e5 all these uh, ideas where uh, white uses their superior space in the center and king side it must have taken in you a lot of time I... you know to analyze all of these lines like there's so many critical setups yeah yeah absolutely but uh, uh, having done this having played this variation for years it uh, helped a lot okay. and uh, it's also something which is uh, which i quite like with the black pieces hmm okay so bishop e3 is this one line to to see and 
there is also okay bishop e3 just to just to understand how to play against these bishop c4 setups do i go bishop e7 uh, absolutely nothing wrong with bishop e7 but uh, in this instance we start with a6 queen e2 bishop d7 okay and then long castle you go bishop d7 bishop d7 ah bishop d7 Actually, uh, I think we start with bishop d7 right away, even without a6. Because, you know, there are some cases where I want b5, uh, knight d4 and b5 directly. So, bishop d7 is our 7th uh, moon uh, sozin. But then you are not afraid of this happening. It's okay. Because yeah, no this queen. is not a problem, I think. Because queen b8 and a6. Because uh, I think that... At the very least, you can defend it with queen b8 and then play a6, which is uh, typical in these setups. Got it. Okay. Wow. Okay, I'm getting a bit, uh, like, getting my bearings around this now. So, bishop c4, we meet it with e6, generally. Uh, and apart from this, there is always this way of playing with bishop e2, which is the classical setup. Yeah, bishop e2 is always an option in the Sicilian and here we have an option um, in terms of structure, either to stick with the knight of structure, which is what we do here, or go towards dragon, because in dragon also knight c6 is a very useful move, uh, that is where the knight goes, so this is always an option for you, right. but uh, in my repertoire I uh, stick with uh, the knight of setups, so e5. Wow, e5 and then... Knight b3. And I guess in this, you were talking about the fact that you can directly get a5 in one move. Yeah. Instead of a6, a5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very useful. Uh, it equalizes much in a much better way. So the system is a lot less effective against uh, classical as opposed to knight of the bishop e2, knight b3 system. This move, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. Very cool. In Nidoff also, a lot of setups have this a5 uh, idea, but that black spends one more on a6 and then plays a5. And uh, also, after bishop e2, e5, knight b3 is not, I think, uh, the best way to continue as white. Okay. Against the classical, white should go knight f3. Hmm. And uh, this is... Uh, Particularly aimed against Black's d5 break in the center. But here I found that uh, we can just continue with bishop e6. It doesn't matter. No, Normally no, Black plays of six. knight g5. Yeah, we can give that bishop up and uh, take f into e6, which strengthens our control in the center. Got it. Not that there's anything wrong with how black plays traditionally with h6. Hmm. But there was a repetition I found for white on the 11th move. And as much as possible in uh, our repertoire, we try to avoid situations where white can make a quick draw. Hmm. It's it's an aggressive repertoire, which uh, is more aimed at you know playing against lower rated players. Right. Or players of equal strength. So you can actually use this, suppose you, you have already a repertoire around 1 e4 e5, which is very solid. Then one e, this can be your like sort of weapon to play for win during critical games and so on. Yeah, it can be one of the weapons. Mm -hmm. And if you're a knight of player like I used to be, then knight c6 becomes very easy for you to add. It's... It's a added option. It's very similar structure. So you don't have a lot of new things in terms of structure. And uh, it's it's a lot less theory compared to the Nile of. Hmm. Srinath, if there is one, like, I, I get it that we've kind of covered many of the moves. Is there anything from a theoretical perspective that you would like to cover more? Because my my uh, uh, request here is to end this with one game of yours, which is kind of favorite from from black side, um, which kind of shows something. Maybe you've played it or it's an inspirational game for you from black side, if we could look at. But 
first have we covered everything uh, from a theory perspective Just yeah to... so you also wanted to have a look at the sidelines right the important sidelines ah you mean for a second move yeah second move ah. or uh, any any questions you have about any anti sicilians um, that is also something we can look at because uh, c3 i sure. did spend uh, considerable time covering the anti sicilians Mm-hmm. because i think only 50% of your games will even reach until 6 bishop g5 mm-hmm. got it so c- yeah uh, i'm uh, yeah i can we are still you. there right yes c3 is what i wanted to uh, see yeah. what is your uh, variation that you've recommended here So again, C three. Uh, I don't have anything specially creative. We just go knight of six. Mm. Uh, I gen- in general in this repertoire, I stick with the lines I play the most myself. E five, knight D five, and uh, now D four. C takes D four. Knight F three. D six. C takes D four and knight uh, C six. Here we don't commit E six. We go knight C six. So we have the option of G six. Okay. So you're going for kind of the main main uh, setup here for for black, which is very well known. Yeah, to uh, we are so. going for uh, the line that Prague played against Arjun in the World Cup when he had to win with black, and. Uh, the annoying thing about alapin 2c3 is that white players use it uh, in a very solid way that it becomes difficult to beat them mm. and uh, this variation in particular i think it uh, offers uh, pretty reasonable chances it's one of the possible lines several lines but i think it offers reasonable chances like uh, prag was able to defeat arjun in a must win game as black in a classical game right right um What about what about knight c three? Do we go knight c six here? Yeah, we go knight c six because in a lot of lines it's important we get d five and one. So knight c six is a uh, better move order than two d six. Okay, and one of the lines, lines which a lot of people face is the grappri attack with f four. And... So f four g six knight f three bishop g seven bishop c four. Uh, these are the lines where i uh, mentioned that it's so useful for us to get d5 in one tempo mm. so we can go e6 knight e7 and d5 and i think this just kills the grand prix attack black gets a better position in uh, these setups okay and also there is this bishop b5 move right which is quite popular yeah again this is much more effective with the pawn on d6 because bishop b5 check you force bishop d7 and then uh, you get the bishop to c4 so the whole point of doing this is to discourage our uh, d5 right uh-huh. so if the bishop comes but uh, the knight on c6 is just simply not as effective and here we can just go knight d4 okay so this is your recommendation here to just jump with the knight and uh, i guess the i mean for for the players who play at a much lower level then uh, this also becomes something that they should be ready for yeah no this i just take a shortcut i just uh, transpose to alapin with knight of 6 okay okay we don't accept the mora gambit because i think it's it's dangerous to be honest really uh, yeah uh, even now like for instance you find someone like hikaru playing this a lot with white in uh, all this Online blitz, Tyrell Tuesday, even sometimes in CCT. Uh, so Stockfish at one point was showing an advantage for Black here, and people started accepting the Mora Gambit a lot more in courses. Mm. But uh, now again, I think it's closer towards equality, and I felt that it's just additional work as Black. Got it. Yeah, some Bishop C4 thought, here. I uh, thought the engines were always giving advantage to Black. Maybe it's changing now with modern engines. Yeah, nowadays the uh, engines uh, make anything equal. I think. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm not. I'm not sure, but it was uh, 
I thought I could bring it up to equal for white and the positions remain dangerous practically. My, my only suggestion, like what I had uh, learned at some point is that it's very important to start with a6 here instead of knight f6 and then generally black will get an advantage. That is what was my uh, prep but maybe this is all now a little bit outdated in the last few years. Um, so uh, definitely, Sagar. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm your uh, what you learned might still hold, but there have been a lot of changes in the sense that people play anti Sicilians a lot more in uh, the last few years with the uh, you know increase in the rapid and blitz games. Mm -hmm. So uh, you will even find uh, a lot of three here. Sorry, you will also find a lot. Lot of games in uh, two H three on the second move. H three <laughs> played by some pretty strong players. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see Rajabo has played it. Oh, okay. I never knew this line. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, the kind of lines that you wouldn't have a second look even uh, ten years ago. Uh, that her games. Hmm. What about Srinath in the last uh, d6, bishop, b5 check? Because this is becoming quite an important line as well. Yeah, so here uh, we go bishop d7, which I think is the most uh, solid uh, way. But after bishop takes d7, we don't take with the queen, but instead we take with the knight. Don't you think this is very, very solid? Like ultra solid or I mean white can play something like c4 and then Maroxi set up and try to uh, you can't get that uh, with the knight takes d7 against queen takes d7 yes mm. but with the knight takes d7 uh, setups uh, and if white plays an early c4 without committing uh, you know d4 then we always have knight e5 interesting and if you take, then this is good for black. And this is weak. Got it. Yeah. So now we have the whole of D5 and uh, why D3 pawn would be a bit weak. Mm. So this uh, setup has also become quite popular in the last uh, few years. Uh, I, I remember there was this one game between Carlson against Giri. Where Carlson got nothing out of the opening and Giri managed to draw very comfortably. And I think it's a very comfortable and easy to play setup for black. This is the game between Carlson and Giri, I guess. They yeah, played, yeah, yeah. They played yeah. it in India. At yes. yes. Okay. So it was part of GCT that year. Right, right, exactly. So this is amazing, Srinath. Uh, also, second move, uh, you've covered it extensively. And I think uh, people will definitely find it useful. As you say, it's very important to learn them as well, not just the main lines, because this happens a lot more now. And uh, it, 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 it is helpful to pay respect to these sidelines. Absolutely. And uh, also my approach towards these sidelines has been in such a way that uh, wherever possible, I'll try to choose the most critical lines as black, you know, not just lines where you just get to an equal position and play. But in uh, several variations, I've tried to put white under pressure. Mm. So it's almost like we are the ones playing white. Okay, very interesting. And so to, to end this, should we have a look at, I would see maybe your game, your, your best. Uh, game sure. I would be more than happy to, more than happy to show one of my uh, games. Okay. This one is, against... uh, uh, I think I would choose my uh, game against grandmaster Zhao Zhong Yuan, uh, the Australian grandmaster. He's a, uh, around uh, Surya Ganguly's uh, age group. A very experienced grandmaster. He played uh, that game in a very traditional way, with you know the traditional plans for white. And uh, winning that game gave me a lot of confidence in this variation. And this happened in which tournament? Uh, it happened in Gold Coast Open in Australia. This was in uh, 2018, I think. Okay. 
so it went all the main moves bishop g5 e6 the first 16 moves which we have already seen queen d2 a6 long castle bishop e7 and uh, f4 bishop d7 uh, knight f3 b5 bishop and f6 g takes f6 king b1 queen b6 f5 long castle F6, GF6, King B1, Queen B6, F5, F5, Long, long Kaiser, G3, King B8, FE, FE, Bishop H3, Rook H8. By the way, it, uh, knight. it is important to mention also that there is another Indian GM who plays this opening a lot, Abhijit Gupta. Oh yeah, Abhijit Gupta play, plays this a lot and uh, at one point he used to play this exclusively. Vidit also used to play this exclusively. Uh, he was kind of in a monogamous relationship with classical Sicilian at the beginning. Right. And he used to complain about it every game. But he also used to score a lot of points. That just feels like what a normal relationship is. <laughs> And this is also one of the childhood openings of R.B. Ramesh and R.P. Ramaswamy. Wow. So the tradition goes, uh, like you said, it, in India, the tradition, mm. it's 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 traditional opening. Yeah. I My experience of this opening also was that in the last round of the candidates at 2016, where Karyakin and Karuana played each other, this was played and Karyakin won with white at that point. Um, if I'm not mistaken and uh, that was a very very important game because both of them could have reached the world championship yeah yeah it's 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 a line uh, it's one of the lines that people go to in a must win situation because why cannot just force a draw right so like you said Kariak in Karwana it happened in Anand Kramnik world championship match mm -hmm. when Anand had a two point lead so here my opponent went 92 which is in uh, line with how white plays in the setup. The point is to put pressure on e6. If you can get two knights with knight f4 and knight d4, then it can get unbearable on e6. And if you play e5 to relieve that pressure, then you weaken the d5 square, which is very important strategically for us. Mm -hmm. I continued with knight e5. Yeah. Knight f d4. Knight c4 attacking the queen. Okay. He moved the queen to h6. Everything is and looking now really e5. good for, for him as of now. e6 is attacked. And queen looks to attack the h7 pawn. But you pushed the pawn. Yeah. And this is uh, again extremely common in situations where white cannot get that knight to d5. Mm. But, I, but Srinath, I can take. Take, right? And then jump yeah. with my knight here and get my other yeah. knight here. You can jump with your knight to f5, but here I would respond with b4. Aha, very important move. Stopping knight c3. Yes, and threatening knight a3 check. Oh, knight a3. Oh. Wow, so if queen takes f7, you would give this check. Yeah, and uh, white can get mated in a uh, few moves, possibly. I'm not sure if. Yeah, maybe king c1, but then I already feel it's a bit risky. Yeah, I think black should be able to continue attack with rook c8, rook c7 and stuff. Wow, okay, got it. So after b4, your opponent went knight c1. Uh, my opponent went knight c1 mm -hmm. so that the knight can come to b3 and defend the b5. Right. I continued with queen c6. e4 pawn is attacked, but we also get the queen to the c5. My opponent played queen h5, attacking the rook on uh, e8, and I went rook c8. Again, knight a3 check is a threat. So he went queen e2. Now bishop d8. Improving the bishop, bringing yeah. it to b6. 
Suddenly, and as you can see, the position has changed good. quite a bit. Yes. Like, you know, the, at that point, White was the one putting all the pressure. But with a few aggressive moves, we have pushed back White. Yes. And he continued with Rook D3, playing in the center. A5. Rook D1. Another Rook to D1. A4. And I can see how easy it is to play as black. You're just pushing your pawn in front of the king, even though you're castled uh, to inside. Right. And this knight does a great job of defending the d6 pawn. It is very well controlled. But it still yeah. does look a bit scary, you know, uh, Srinath, with your king on b8 being all exposed. I, I didn't feel scared at all, actually. I was pretty happy. Uh, I just continued with King A8 here. Oh. And I was just bringing my pieces uh, one by one against White's King. So I put my pawns on B4, A4, Knight on C4. He played Rook D3. I just went Bishop B6. You know, very slowly, methodically, bringing my pieces one by one. Uh, C3 he continued with, trying to create some space in front of his King. I ignored it, played Bishop A7. So that the bishop is on a good diagonal and the b file is open. And he can't and take... And he cannot take c, takes b4. Because mm -hmm. knight a3 check. Wow. Okay. So he played king a1. And now I finally broke through with a3. Whoa. And by this time he was also getting a bit into time trouble. Uh, this whole setup was something new. And he had to solve problems from the beginning. So, this attack was crashing through. He took b takes a3. Mm. I took with the knight. Giving up the d6 pawn, but going uh, towards the white king. Uh, he took he took on d6. Knight takes d6. Okay. I went rook b8. I went rook b8 and now b takes c3 is a threat with mm. rook b1 uh, checkmate options. So he closed off that file with c4. But this allowed me to win material with bishop d4 check. Oh, yeah. He has to give up an exchange now. Yeah. So he took with uh, d3 rook, rook into d4. E takes d4, rook takes d4. Uh, sorry, rook takes d4, e takes d4. He took he played c5 to defend the d6 knight. But the attack is not over. I continued with b3. Of course, you have to play b3, knight. yes. <laughs> yeah, knight takes b3. Yeah. Rook a7. Wow. Nice. I like how your king is just uh, chilling here. He, uh, and all the other pieces are attacking. Yeah, each of those pieces. Queen d3. Queen a4. Now the pieces uh, have, you know, really reached White's king. He played rook f5 to bring the troop back to the defense. Knight b5. Discard attack on a2. Rook f2 defending it. Knight uh, c3 with the idea of queen into a2, rook into b3, everything. Wow. He played knight c1. Rook b1. And now queen d1. Oh. Why walk when you can dance? Yes, queen d1. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we go for checkmate. Beautiful, beautiful. And with this, he resigned? Yeah, he resigned. What a game, Srinath. It's also very uh, instructive and inspirational because the way in which you kind of conducted the attack from this point onwards was very instructive. Pushing your pawns, bringing your rooks, moving your bishop. So I think these are a few things which um, definitely people should uh, pay close attention to. Uh, 
so so Srinath, you have made a chessable course on um, mm -hmm. Sicilian classical, and in the description, people can get a link to get your full course. And also, there is a short and sweet, which is an one hour long repertoire, uh, which they mm -hmm. can download for free. Yeah, uh, they cannot download, but they can watch it for free. Mm -hmm. They can watch it. They can practice it. And uh, short, yeah, uh, Chessable has short and sweet for almost uh, every course that comes out. It's like a free preview of what you get in a full course. So you can always check that out first. It's like, you know, when I go to uh, Amazon Kindle to buy a book, I always look at this free preview first to see if I like what the author has written. Right. And then if it is interesting, then there is already the option to buy the full uh, book within that preview. So you can also do that. And uh, there is also a 30 day money back guarantee. No questions asked. So again, if you by chance buy the course and find that it's not for you, which can very well happen. Um, you don't like every opening, you don't like every author, or you like both, but you feel that this is not for you, then you can just write to Chessable and no questions asked, you will get your money back. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. But you would recommend it to sort of the, the ambitious tournament players and anyone who wants a good opening repertoire with black yeah uh it's a it's specifically for ambitious players i think about uh 1400 fide maybe to start with mm. and uh, it can go up to any any range 14 although this is not an opening that uh, these days is very misleading because some of them uh within few months get to 2200 now and i mean the rating system <laughs> itself has become very very difficult to navigate in general now yeah and the indian 1400 and uh, 1400 in rest of the world is so different yeah. it's like currency exchange <laughs> the indian uh, rating is like pounds right right but uh Srinath, how many hours is this entire video series uh, the entire video series is uh, 34 hours. 34? Around that. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. But uh, uh, the variations, the number of variations is about 700. Mm. Wow. So you can uh, buy only the Moo Trainer version on Chessable. Or you can buy with the video, which uh, is generally uh, much more expensive. But yeah. Amazing. I'll, I'll put all the links in there. And also, uh, Srinath, thank you for giving us this very nice preview of, of uh, Sicilian classical. I think uh, just based on this, people can already start playing it on their online games and so on. And then when they'll get stuck, maybe they can then go and check out your uh, repertoire. And I think that will be very, very helpful to them. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sagar, for... Uh... Uh, taking the time and having me here. And well, you took I really... the time from Bangladesh, you know, like you're playing at the <laughs> Bangladesh League. Uh, you have, uh, it's it's early in the morning, but I'm I'm sure that um, uh, you you are doing well there. You also won a game yesterday with Queen Knight versus Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Inspired by Gukesh. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you, Srinath. Talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And I do hope that, uh, like me, um, people uh, score a lot of wins in the classical Sicilian. I personally have a score of 9 out of 10 in classical over the board. Ooh. It was 8 and a half out of 9. I made a draw here. Ah, yeah. So in all the promos, I said I have 8 and a half out of 9, but it's 9 out of 10 now. Well, maybe make it 10 out of 11, at least one one win. Then we can record it. That win again, like when you win <laughs> it. So, a sequel to this. But yeah, I do hope that uh, others also score a lot of wins with the classical Sicilian. Like they scored with the Catalan. <laughs> Thanks, Srinath. Bye. Bye.